Hey guys, so in this section we're going to begin talking about polygon objects and um, editing them too and uh, we're even going to go ahead and create a couple things so it should be kind of a fun way to get your feet wet. So if you remember from last time we were talking about the create menu if you go over here and go to polygon primitives you'll see there's a whole list of different objects that we can create here. Uh, there's also this little interactive creation checkbox so if you have this checked, and it probably will be checked by default when you first launch Maya, you'll be creating cubes in this way. So you see I clicked on the cube, and it's giving me a little crosshair. And now if I use the left mouse button, I'm going to be dragging this sort of rectangular or square shape. And now it's going to ask me to extrude it upwards. And then it finishes. And then we have a cube here. Um, I don't really like this way of creating cubes because for me when I start out with a cube I'm really looking to get something that's perfectly square and then editing it from there so I'm just going to delete that and I just use the delete key on my keyboard to get rid of that and now I'm going to go back up to that same menu but this time I'm going to turn this off so I click on that and now it's turned off and what uh, the difference is is now that if I click cube all of a sudden I've got a perfect little cube here that's built at the scene origin and it's perfectly square and uh, that's more helpful when you're working so I recommend keeping that interactive checkbox turned off so um, that's how you create a polygon primitive now we have a lot of other primitives that we can choose from um, although the cube is the one I start with most often but we'll get into that a little bit later uh, so I'm going to take this menu and actually tear it off. If you look at Maya menus, even on the hotbox, when you open something up, there's this little dotted line. And if you click on that dotted line, it's going to take that menu and tear it off into its own little floating menu. And if you want, you can just close it down again. Um, it still exists here, so it's not like it goes somewhere and then disappears. So there we go. And let's just go ahead and create a bunch of these. Uh, so you remember the W, E, and R hotkeys are for translating, moving things around, rotating, that's E, and then R is for scaling up and down. You can also grab these handles and scale it in one direction if you want. So I'm just going to move this over and let's create a sphere. Here we go and a cylinder. Put that over here. There's also cones, simple planes, which is just like a flat piece of geometry. Doesn't have any depth, or I should say it doesn't have any thickness. Put that over here. A torus is kind of like a donut shape. Then there's some other ones that are a little bit less useful. Uh, prism, which is actually is kind of like a cylinder in a way, just with fewer divisions. We've got a pyramid shape, pipe, helix. This is pretty cool. Get to that in a second. Uh, soccer ball, if you will, or a football, depending on what country you live in. And then a platonic solid, which is sort of like this polyhedron type shape. So these are all the polygon primitives that we have available to us. But when we're modeling things, you know, making characters or cars or buildings and stuff like that, we don't necessarily just take all these things and put them in different configurations. We actually edit them. And usually what we start out with is a cube. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about primitives because there are certain things that are extremely useful. Uh, especially the helix here. But if you click on any primitive that you create and then click on the inputs of that primitive, it'll expand this little menu here. And this will give you options as to how this actually looks. So I can add more divisions along the width or the height. Or I can grab both of these at the same time. And again, what I'm doing is just clicking on this text and then using the middle mouse button in my 3D scene, I'm just scrubbing left and right. Uh, 
Uh, you can also change the width interactively, depth, that sort of thing. Um, so that's just for a cube. You've got these things. Uh, but different primitives are going to have different options. For example, the helix, which I use uh, quite often whenever I need a coily type shit, it has a radius that I can scrub up and down. And uh, spans going along the axis here. I can change that too. And then the number of divisions along the coil itself. These can all be interactively uh, altered. And so the best way to think about this is uh, the way Maya works is it works off of a history basis. So if you want to think of it this way, we're actually editing the history of this thing. It's kind of like if you were a time traveler and you went back in time and um, you know, uh, gave yourself, you know, told yourself in the past to start doing push-ups. When you got back to the future, you'd have a bigger <laughs> physique. You'd have bigger arms or whatever, you know, from doing all the push-ups. So it's just this idea of going back into the history of this object, changing something, and it changes its present look. So in this case, I'm changing the number of divisions that this thing was built with, and it's going back into time, if you will, and this is the result. Um, this is all instantaneous. There's no real time travel, of course, but uh, it's just something, uh, a way you can think about it. And what will happen is, as we edit these objects in Maya, this will become an important point, because as you make changes, it will add that information in the history stack of that object. And after a while, we'll have to delete the history, which is kind of like baking out the information so that we don't have it anymore because it takes up a lot of memory and things end up taking forever. But we'll get back to that a little bit later on. Right now I just want to emphasize how we can change uh, the way things look by uh, altering the history of these objects. So I won't go through each of these, but <clears throat> you know some of these have different attributes that are unique. The pipe has a thickness value, I think. The pyramid, I think, just has an option to switch number of sides. Yeah, so you can dial this up and down. In this case, you can't scrub it. You have to actually choose it explicitly. Same thing with the torus here. <coughs> So this has an interesting feature, uh, the twist feature. So it's not actually adding or deleting edges. It's just shifting those edges around the object or sliding them around. Of course, we also have the option to change those. By the way, if you're following along, uh, there's one thing I forgot to mention. When you first open up your Maya scene, it's going to be in wireframe mode. So to change that, just click this little button right here. It'll say Smooth Shade All. And that will give you this shaded kind of look. And uh, right now I'm looking at it with Wireframe Unshaded, which is the button right to the right of that. So by default this will be turned off. I usually work with it turned on so I can see the edges as I'm working. <clears throat> 